Week one of college football is always a celebration for yours truly. It's the 150th season. There's nothing like the tradition and history and pageantry of college football. A snapshot, though, of where we are today and where we've come from in the past is somewhat blurred. Yeah, it's always wonderful to have a great debate, to argue, and to think, well, maybe things aren't perfect, and that maybe college football's imperfection is what makes it special. But in this, the college football playoff era, we have seen the so-called view from the outside in of dominance of two conferences and two teams take the sport over in a manner that I believe deflects the parity that we really have in the game. We've already seen examples of it in week one. No, the Jackrabbits didn't beat Minnesota, but they almost did. From week one, we always seemingly overreact. But it's easy to when you see teams like Clemson do what they did as the reigning champions. Travis Etienne goes for three touchdowns, 205 yards. Who's going to stop that all-world quarterback that unquestionably, if he stays healthy, is the front runner for the Heisman Trophy? Well, the question is, is anyone in the ACC capable of doing it? I certainly don't think so. Texas A&M is the toughest game left on Clemson's schedule. And while there's absolutely no debate that Dabo's team is dominant within the ACC, what is at question is why then does he get to play only eight conference games? And why would the same be also true for Alabama? Only eight conference games, while the Pac-12 and Big 12 and Big 10 load themselves down with nine conference games, and in some cases, two tough non-conference games against P5 schools. We aren't going to get the conference commissioners to settle on making schedules uniform. And with that being the case, there's only one answer to this. Alabama will get more of a challenge in the SEC because Georgia is getting close to their level. In fact, if they could just get over the hump in the fourth quarter, they would have already gotten a national championship. LSU within their own division and Auburn within their own division will give them a go. And listen, Alabama has to go to College Station to play Texas A&M. But if you look at their non-conference schedule, it's as pathetic this year as it was last year. Clemson and Alabama are the two best teams, no doubt about it. But we have many more that we just don't hear enough about. And in this age of so-called dominance, when it's a pure playoff privilege period in our game, we need to open the gates and allow more access to those teams that could give them good games. Let's go to eight before we're really in peril in college football today.